The White House officially begins today. Iowa's caucuses lead it all off as they have done since the 1970s, but how does the state's unique system of choosing a presidential candidate work? Coming up at 7 o'clock on CBS Mornings, Tony DeCopo leading the show's team coverage. And right now, he is joining us live from Des Moines. Tony, always good to see you. Uh, so, Iowa Republicans will likely be dealing with temperatures dipping below freezing, below zero degrees during today's caucuses. And right now, we understand it feels like negative 33 degrees. We feel for you, our friend. So, what's being done to sort of combat the cold and make sure voters head out to the polls? Oh, gosh. Uh, well, the candidates are pushing as hard as they possibly can to motivate people through this final weekend now into Monday to brave the cold. They're telling people to check their car batteries because those may not start to bring blankets in case the car breaks down on the way. And Donald Trump, in a memorable Donald Trump way, typical hyperbole, said, even if you go and you die after you vote, it'll be worth it. So they're doing all they can. <laughs> To motivate their voters. Uh, but, you know, it is a question whether people turn out. It has never been this cold. This is cold even for Iowa, I'm told. So it's a big wild card. Turnout could be low, and low turnout could yield surprises, according to Bob Costa, who's here, is going to be chatting politics with me as well. So, Tony, you'll also be interviewing Florida Governor Ron DeSantis live on the show. Do you think he can make a strong showing there? Uh, he certainly thinks so, but a notable change in the way he's projecting confidence and managing expectations. You know, for months and months and months, he was telling people that he's going to win the Iowa caucus, and then the polls have kind of slammed against him lately, and now he's saying that he is uh, enjoying being an underdog. So identifying in that way is a, is a big shift, and people do wonder if he can't finish a strong second here if he has a path through New Hampshire uh, and then South Carolina. Of course, he's going to argue that he does. I'm trying to figure out how two Florida guys, me and Ron DeSantis, ended up in sub zero temperatures in Iowa <laughs> talking about politics. It's a very strange world we live in. Well, it's smart that you're talking with us from inside right now, Tony. Uh, you've had the opportunity to talk with a lot of voters over the last few days. What are the main issues that they say they're concerned about? Well, you know, people always say the economy, but when you ask them what they're thinking about the most, here in Iowa, they're not saying the economy. In fact, they're talking about the border. People are really worried with the scale of the crisis there, in their view, the number of people coming over. And you hear a lot about a very old-fashioned, back to the founding of the U.S. question, which is one of assimilation and American culture. Who can be a real American, a true American? And there are some pretty frank worries, which we have in a story today, of people saying, look, We've got folks here who are eroding what had been, and they're scared about that. Plus drugs, plus they think the economy is made worse by immigration, plus they think there is a lack of fairness in helping new Americans or people who want to be Americans versus the Americans here. It is a messy, naughty, emotional issue, uh, and that really is top of mind. It gets people talking here in Iowa, even though we are more than 1,000 miles from that southern border. A lot to talk about, and we'll see how it all pans out today at the polls. Tony DeCopel live in Des Moines for us. Thank you so much for joining us.